So week three are our prayers. Search me was the first week, so hopefully you've had some search me, oh God moments. Okay? Uh, last week was break me. Hopefully you've had some break me, oh God moments. For maybe the thing that he searched your heart about, brought it to the surface, and hopefully it was a, a break me, oh God moment from this. For me, if you missed it, check out last week's sermon. It's on our website. But I felt like God broke me from some cynicism I had. And I say some, I use it gently. I mean a lot. Okay? <laughs> I mean a lot of cynicism. And if you missed it, it's important for me that you see it. Because honestly, it has been a game changer for me. It has meant that my wife has said I've been kinder to her. So anytime your wife says you've been kinder to her, gentlemen, you should follow my lead. Okay? Um, something, something's happening that's right. So, um, so last week was break me. This week is going to be send me. Send me. And it's a prayer of availability, basically. It's God, I'm available. And I think we heard a little bit of that in, in, uh, in Bob and Lorraine's just a little short story, right? A little testimony. That it was easy for them. It was natural. But you know what? It wasn't so natural last year. Maybe it wasn't so easy at one point. And even before last year, there were things maybe about being available to God that weren't so easy, weren't so natural. That's true for any time we do something for the first time, right? And any time we pray a prayer of availability, God, send me. God, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Am I? Here I am. It, that's not always an easy thing to do. Jonah, <laughs> Jonah, um, in, in Jonah it reads like this, Jonah chapter 1, verse 3. There's, there's three responses to God's call. Let me go to my notes. There's three responses to God's call. Number one, we get one from Jonah. He says, here I am, I'm not going. Here I am, Lord, I'm not going. That's literally the first response to God's call. So God makes a call in our lives. Okay, sounds like, sounds something maybe like, who shall I send, or who will go for me, or who will do this for me, or who will host a Spanish exchange student, who will go work in the nursery. Here I am, but I'm not going. You know, we show up at church, it's kind of a here I am posture. We hear a message, God, I'm not going. Jonah says that this, God says, go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it, because of its wickedness has come up before me. Verse 3, but Jonah ran away from the Lord. He ran the other way, the other direction. Clearly, he might not have said it, but his body language said enough of it, yeah? Have you ever run away from God's call? Have you ever quenched God's spirit? Have you ever heard God say to you, hey, I need you to do this for me, or I need you to slow down and go talk to this person, or I need you to go write this letter, or I need you to go make that phone call, or yeah, that person that stopped on the side of the road, I need you to slow down, stop, and see if they need your help. Those are maybe some simple things, but I believe that, that if you've lived this life long enough, if you follow God long enough, there are probably a couple things that might haunt you even. That might even be haunting moments, where you're like, God, here I am. Okay, I heard that, but I'm not going. Have you ever had an I'm not going moment? If you have, chances are it's a, it's a point of like regret. A point of haunting. I sometimes I wonder how many of us have sensed God calling us, leading us, but we say we're not doing it. We've got too much going on. I, I can't give. That person has more money than me. They, they can give. That, that stay-at-home mom, she's got plenty of time all in the world. She can do it. Um, here I am, I'm not going. That's one response to God's call. The second response to God's call can sound like this. Moses, he says, here I am, send someone else. Did you ever pray that prayer? Exodus 3.10 says, so now go, I'm sending you to Pharaoh, God's talking to Moses, to bring my people to the Israelites out of Egypt. But Moses says to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Aaron, out of, out of Egypt? He says, send Aaron. Um, send someone else. I'm not the right person. I need to make more money. I need to take care of my house first. There are some things I've got to keep in order. I've got to go bury my father. Jesus says, let the dead go bury their dead. Send someone else, God. They're more qualified than me. They're more talented than me. They have more experience than me. They're so biblically well-versed than me. Send someone else, for sure. Someone can do it in my place. Here I am, said someone else. The third response to God's call is the response I want to kind of sit on a little bit today. And that's Isaiah's response in Isaiah chapter 6. Here I am, send me. Isaiah 6, 8. 
Or no, we're going to go to Isaiah 6. Yeah, he says, Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, Here I am. Send me. That's the prayer I want us to pray this week. God, here I am. Send me. But there's a couple of things we need to do in order to fully surrender to God in this way. It's not an easy prayer to pray, to wake up in the morning and say, Lord, here I am, send me. Here I am, I'm available to use me. But we need to do a couple things. We need to have a couple of moments in order to fully surrender to God. We're going to see it in Isaiah 6. The first thing we need to have is a genuine experience with the presence of God. A genuine experience with the presence of God. Isaiah 6, 1 says, In the year that King Uzziah died, Isaiah speaking, he says, I saw the Lord, high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. The picture that Isaiah had was a vision of the Lord sitting on, in his temple on his throne, high and lifted up. The train of his robe was filling the temple, and there were angels and seraphim, and they were singing, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Isaiah had a moment where he was literally in the presence of God. He saw the presence of God. He felt like he was in the presence of God. He had been ushered in the presence of God. We use a word sometimes called the manifest presence. It's where, I don't know, have you ever had a moment where you're driving down the road and you've got a worship song on and all life is going sorts of different ways and you're seeking God and all of a sudden it just feels like your car is flooded with his presence? That that song, that music, his spirit takes you to another place? Have you ever gone on a long walk early in the morning or late in the afternoon or just escaped your house from all its chaos and just wanted to go on a long walk and you start talking with God and you feel a sense of his presence? I mean, have you ever been here on a sunny morning where all of a sudden we're worshiping and someone's talking and we're doing some communion or there's just a moment even here where we're experiencing kind of the presence of God. There's a sense in your spirit that God is here, he's real, and he's talking to me. That his Holy Spirit is ministered in my heart. Isaiah has this real sense of the presence of God. He feels the whole earth is full of his glory. And when you sense the presence of God in your life, one of the things that's going to happen is you're going to naturally be inclined to make yourself more available to God. When you draw near to God, he will draw near to you. When's the last time you had a genuine experience with the presence of God? And let me say this, it's not based on anyone else. It's no one else's responsibility to create a space for you to experience the presence of God. You can't say, oh, Pastor, but the worship leader, I'm so tired of singing that song over and over again. The speaker, it's you every week. Why can't we have a guest speaker? When we have a guest speaker, I experience the presence of God. Uh, whatever it is, no, there is, it is no one else's responsibility to help you experience the presence of God. The reality is it's available to each and every one of us. In the still places, in the quiet places, in the everyday places. Every day, every day, guys, you and I can experience the presence of God. He loves to come to you when you pause and you slow down and you take some time to be with him. In my house, there is a battle for the presence of Anthony. You don't know this. I am the most wanted man in my home. People, people, these are my kids, my children, my, my four children and my wife. These people vie for my presence. I don't think I'm not worth being around, but they do. Allison wrestles, struggles to get those boys in bed at, as early as possible. And the only reason is so that she can be with me. And I wonder why. My kids battle to be with me. I, I, the moment I'm home, can we play, Daddy? Can you, can you play basketball with me? When are you going to stop working? Um, there is an ongoing battle for the presence of Anthony. And, 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 and what's true about that, it's true about our Heavenly Father, is that there's something sweet when we're in the presence of the people we love. There's something sweet. And there, I guarantee you, every time you're with God, you will experience a genuine sense of His presence that if you genuinely want to... Pray the prayer, send me. You genuinely want to make yourself available to God. And maybe you're wondering, God, why am I not being used by you? It's simply because he hasn't had a chance to tell you what he wants you to do. I mean, think about it. He just hasn't had a moment in your day to whisper to you. say, hey, so glad you asked. Because I've been waiting for you to ask. There's 
there's this friend you have in your life that I'm just primed and ready for you to just say a simple word, invite them for a cup of coffee, just talk for them, even pray for them. A genuine experience of the presence of God is what we need to be fully surrendered to God. Number two is a genuine awareness of our sinfulness. One of the biggest cultural lies that we embrace is that we're good people. But, but we need to see how good God is and know how good we're not. And so in verse 5, Isaiah writes this, after he's been in the presence of God, his first response to the presence of God is, Woe to me, I cried. I am ruined. I am awful. I, I'm ruined. This moment has ruined me. I'm no good. I'm a man of unclean lips, an unclean heart, an unclean hands, you name it, an unclean mind. I am unclean through and through. And I, I live among the people of unclean lips. My eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. And when you come into the presence of God, and you see the King for who He is. You see the Lord Almighty for His power, for His majesty, for His sovereignty. But also, you see Jesus for His intimate love, for His kindness, and for His touch. Your response will be, Woe to me! I am ruined. This moment that I thought would be with Jesus would be awesome will make you aware of your sinfulness. I've been fielding these sorts of questions actually for the last couple of weeks from friends of mine who have been like, Anthony, I'm so broken, I'm so ruined, I'm so awful, I'm so sinful. I'm more aware of my sin than I ever dare imagine or believe myself to be. Remember a couple of weeks back I, I quoted somebody who said, sometimes we need to sit among the weeds of our sin rather than try and pull out our sins. And Isaiah here says, woe to me. So if you feel inside your heart a level of that you're just not good enough, that you're not clean enough, that you're not rising to the occasion, that you're a complete utter failure. And my friend said, you even suck at sucking. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're in good company. Because Isaiah, in response to God's presence, said, woe to me. I'm unclean. But thank God he doesn't leave him there, right? Thank God he doesn't leave him there. Because number three, reminds us that we need a genuine understanding of God's grace. Because then one of the seraphim that were flying around him in verse 6 flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. And with it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips, your guilt is taken away, and your sin has been atoned for. As far as the east is from the west, I have removed your sin from your life. For all those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you have been saved, you are clean, you are forgiven. And for those of us who stand in the presence of God, respond by saying, woe to me, I'm unclean. Jesus comes along and cleanses us and forgives you. And he says, therefore, there is now no condemnation for those of you who are in Christ Jesus. No condemnation. He doesn't remember your sin anymore. He has cleansed you from all unrighteousness and he has robed you with his robe. He has clothed you with his robe. And I'm reminded that God's mercies are new every day. That every day we can say, oh God, we're woe to me. Your lying lips, our hatred, our secret sin, our sexual sin, the fact that we've stolen, we've cheated, the same coal that removed his guilt is the same blood that Jesus takes away our sins. That we don't bring anything to the table. Jesus brings it all. So we can say, send me. Not for who I am or what I have or the skill set I can bring, but because of your presence, I can embrace my sinfulness and I can fall on your grace. And so Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8, Whom shall I send? Isaiah finally responds, Here I am. Send me. Here I am. Send me. It's not a reluctant send me either. It's not a, well, shoot, i got to serve Jesus now that he did all this for me. It's a, I get to serve Jesus I get to give him my life. I want to serve him. I want to be at his beck and mercy. If you've been in the presence of God, your response is, oh God, thank you. What can I do for you? How can I serve you? It's, and it's also not a one-time decision. Not 2002, November 16, 2002, whenever you gave your life to Jesus and said, Lord, send me. It's not a one-time decision. But it's an everyday, must-pray kind of prayer. The reality is, you guys have handed me prayer cards, and I love them. I've been getting them, and I've, I've been reading them. I actually put them on a little metal loop. I hole-punched them, and I keep them in my bag now, and I flip them, and I'm praying for you. 
So keep filling out those connect cards. Write your prayer requests down. Put them on the thing. We're going to be praying for you until I flip that card over and write the answer to your prayer when that prayer was answered. So don't be cynical. Don't give up hope. Pray, and I'm praying with you. But most of the prayers we pray are for ourselves, about ourselves, or for the loved ones we love, right? I have not got a prayer request yet that says, Pastor, pray for me. God is sending me here. And I need you to pray that I have the courage to do this. Or I need you to pray that I figure out a plan to accomplish this or the strategy to figure this one out. Pray for me because my faith isn't big enough to accomplish this task. Pray for me because I've got so-and-so, so-and-so, so-and-so that are kind of pushing up against me because God is sending me somewhere. Now, I'm not asking God to send you to the farthest corners of Africa, okay? Although that's a good place. But I don't think for many of you that's going to be where God sends you. I think He's going to send you here. I think He's going to send you where you live, where you work, where you play, locally. That more likely than not, that's where God wants to send you. That's where God wants you to be available. Once you understand all this, it's easy to say yes to Jesus. Our spirits, when we get sent, come alive in Christ. And the reality is our spirit is at war with Him. Our spirit is also, our flesh is also at war with Him. But there's a, the Spirit of God within us that wants to serve Him. That wants to be sent by Him. So, this is our prayer this week. Send me. Send me to Africa. Send me to Tajikistan. We don't even have to go to Tajikistan. Aggie knows someone from Tajikistan. Do you know where Tajikistan even is, folks? No, it's in Central Asia. And you cannot preach the gospel in Tajikistan. You will get kicked out of that country. In Kazakhstan, Tajikistan, all the stands. But do you know what's happening here? Is that the stands are coming to America. There are people all around us that we are connected to through some points of influence. And you have no idea how close you are to people who cannot be reached the ends of the world are coming to us. And so we need God to send us. We need God to send us, even here, even locally. So, my challenge to us that we pray. That we pray to send me to Africa. You don't have to go to Africa. You can just go to Children's Church. Literally, you can go to Children's Church down the road. Down, down the, road. They, the nursery is like Africa. As a matter of fact, Maximo, this morning, he thought I was going to the nursery. He said, Dad, you're finally going to go, you're finally going to go work in the nursery? I was like, literally, he heard me say something. He said, Dad, you're going to finally go work in the nursery? Like, that was like, you know, the big field. He, he said, Ada, that's a Seabird's daughter, he said, Ada does, a, does an army crawl down the nursery. And, um, look, God, God needs us to serve. So it doesn't have to be big. All we have to do is slow down and listen. They might be serving in the nursery. It's similar to going to Africa. But ultimately, it's the same thrill of being used by God. Yeah. Of being used by God and making a difference. And then when you get used by God once, you're like, God, use me again. I love hearing from people the experience, the aha, the big moment when they say, Wow, I felt like God used me. Yeah. Do you remember those moments? you remember the first time you felt that? It's a life-changing moment. So, send me. Send me. God, send me. I want you to wake up tomorrow morning and I want you to pray, God, I'm here and I'm ready to be used by you. I'm here and I'm making myself available to you. How can you use me? How will you send me into work today? How will you send me into my school today? How will you send me into my family? How will you send me as a volunteer? God is not done with you yet. And there's really something great. I believe God loves us all, but I believe he's a really big fan of those who partner with him in this way. Like, I don't know if God plays favorites, but occasionally in the New Testament we get glimpses of disciples that Jesus loved. And he occasionally spent a little more time with them than the other ones. I imagine those guys were a little bit more kind of in cahoots with Jesus. Just a little bit more partners, just a little bit maybe longing to listen, longing to be used.
I love getting your prayer requests, but I would even love hearing more how God and where God is sending you. So, let's bow our heads for a second. There's a few of us in here, but you know what? It only took 12 to change the world. And if God sent us in this room, if we like really listen to God and genuinely, sincerely, like a child, said, God, how can you use me today? Where do you want to send me? I'm available for you. I believe the God that sometimes we have a hard time hearing would speak loud and clear in these moments. But we touched on a couple things, so right now I just want us to meditate for a few minutes on the genuine experience of God, the awareness of our sinfulness, and understanding God's grace. So Lord, in our hearts right now, would you fill us with your presence? I believe we're all here because we're very sincere followers. We're very sincere children. We want to be used by you. This is true of us. So would you give us an experience of your presence this morning? Would you, as you show us our sinfulness, help us to fully understand your grace so that we might be released and not held back for your service. We'd be released to be available. Send me, Lord. Send me. Pray that prayer quietly to yourself. Just pray a prayer of availability right now. You might just be repeating those words, send me, or it might be just saying, Lord, I'm available, use me. You just, in your mind, repeat those words to our Savior. And maybe even this morning, he has something to say to you. Maybe he's putting someone in your mind. Maybe he's putting a ministry for you to volunteer in. ourselves available to you as a church and as individuals. Send us, O oh God. We're here. Use us. May this day be a life-changing moment for the posture for the rest of our week and the rest of our days. Help us to see as you see. In Jesus' name, amen. And let's stand together. Let's worship our God. One who loves the set.
practical. I want you to either write this down, or I want you to write these, this phrase down, or take out your phone, or send yourself a text, okay? I want you to do this. I want you to ask yourself the question, Lord, or God, or Jesus, <laughs> you can call whatever you want, what, what are you saying to me? What are you saying to me? Okay? And I want you to ask that in the morning. I want you to ask that in the afternoon. I want you to ask that as you're going about your day. And then the follow-up question is this. What do you want me to do about it? Okay? You ask yourself this question. You want to be serious about the said me that I just talked about, that we read about? This right here will change everything. If you're working with people, if you're sitting... Bob, Dr. Bob's working on someone in his chair, and he's listening to stories, and he asks this question... While they're talking, while he's drilled in their mouth, all right? And he's like, well, we want him to focus, first of all. But if he in his head, in the back of his head, because it's like, you know, Bob's, Bob's thinking about lots of things while he's working on people's mouth. He's not even thinking about the tooth he's working on. He's so good at it. But if he's working and he says, Lord, what are you saying to me? I'm telling you, if you ask this question, you're interacting with your friends, and you're like, Lord, what are you saying to me? And then, and then you listen. I guarantee you God will speak to you. He's going to say something to you. And then you have to ask the follow-up. You have to say, God, what do you want me to do about it? I remember hearing this once, the guy's like, you know, God said, go buy him a hot dog. And he bought him a hot dog. And all of a sudden, the, the conversation went 10,000 different places. You don't know what that one thing's going to do, that thing that God's prompting you to do. So look, if I never see you again, God bless you. But if you keep coming back every week, I want to hear it. What God's saying to you, what you did about it. I guarantee you're going to come back with Anthony. Yeah. Things are different. I'm making myself available to God. And all of a sudden, this is easy. I, got, I can't even keep up with God. Because he's got so many things. So look, two questions. Lord, what are you saying to me? And then, and then you got to follow up. God, what do you want me to do about it? And I don't care if it's as dumb as buying someone a hot dog. Okay? Do it. And, and if nothing comes of it, you share a good hot dog together. 
but something might come of it. So, if you'll do this, you'll make my heart glad, and I believe some. I believe your life will just you'll, you'll experience some unique thrills of serving God. So, God bless you guys. Moms, have a great day. Everyone, have a great day today. Enjoy yourself. Find some time to be with God and, and, and whoever. Just have a great day. Can I say that? God bless you. We'll see you next week at the Jumping Brook Country Club. Okay? We've got the space from like 9 o'clock in the morning to 12, but we're calling our time from 10 to 11.30. Be there promptly at, the, at that time. $10 a person is suggested. It's actually $20 a person buffet, but the church is covering most of the cost. So if you can contribute. But we want no one to be left out. So please come. If you can't afford it, that's okay. God will provide money. Trust me. Um, bring a friend. This might be a great event. Might be a great little experience. We're going to be singing. We're going to sing together. We're going to try and get a little couple testimonies going. I'm going to say a little something about prayer. And we're just going to have a good time together. Okay? So we'll see you next Sunday. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a great day.